Welcome. In the last lecture, we looked at point processes of an image that allowed us to do simple arithmetic addition subtractions of pixels from one image to the other. Let's now look at the whole concept of how we can take a pixel and look around the neighborhood of that pixel and use that information to improve the quality of an image. For example, by looking at an averaging around a pixel, we can blur an image. We can also do other things like if there is noise in the image, we can look at the neighborhood and again get rid of the noise in an image. So those kinds of processes let us now look at neighborhoods of pixels within the single image or multiple images and use that to enhance the quality of images. That's the kind of stuff we're going to look at in this series of lectures. Here I'm going to actually show you the focal length in the field of views using this chart as we go in forward. So the field of view was 120 degrees uh, in the horizontal when we were looking at 12 millimeter lens. When we move to uh, 24, 74 degrees, 50 millimeter, 40 degrees, 85 millimeter, 24 degrees, 116 millimeter, 17 degrees, 9 degrees field of view for 220 millimeter, and 300 millimeter basically shows 7 uh, degrees. It's a much closer viewpoint. Interesting way of looking at how we can go from a focal length of 12 millimeters to 300 millimeters and how the field of view changes. So by now you may be a little curious as to why are we trying to do this. So let's look at an example that we've looked at before. You may recall this image that we looked at before where we generated a panorama. And if you look at this carefully, you'll see again that there are different sub-images in this image. So for example, you can see some of the boundaries of different images here. And of course, each and every one of them is a separate image of their own. And what we're interested in now is taking all of these images and merging them together so you would have a full panorama. So this, of course, is the output. Now you cannot see any lines across the whole spectrum of this panorama. All different images have been merged together. I will flip back to the previous one again. So if just looking at these flips, you should be able to see that the basic boundaries between different sub-images have vanished to generate a complete smooth image. And that actually is what the output we were looking at. So in this lecture, we will look at is how to go about coming at various techniques we can to be able to blend images so these types of edges that exist when you merge two images together vanish. Just another way of looking at the same concept here, this is the film thing. Light comes in from down here. There is protective coating. The emulsion is where most of the details of the, uh, the light silver halides and everything else is, adhesive, and there's a base, and of course, that's covered up to prevent it from getting damaged across the board. Sounds simple and basically it's a very interesting process. Uh, you know, full credit to the people who innovated this whole idea ways back when and some of the earliest cameras as we talked about before were developed in the uh, mid 1800s. Uh, purely a chemical process and of course it took them a while to even figure out how to preserve and save and then print out, develop and print out from these chemical processes. So this is my exposure triangle. Shutter speed, aperture, ISO. By changing the aperture, we can actually get an impact of depth of field. Increasing ISO, we get more grain. And decreasing the shutter speed, we can get motion blur. So it's a combination of these three things that allows you to explore how we can actually best take the pictures we want. So aperture opening is one of the parameters we want to control. Shutter speed, that is how long do I want to keep the shutter open to get the amount of light in. Uh, to my sensor is something I want to do. And once it hits the sensor, I want to actually know more about the sensitivity of the film or the digital sensor that we're using. And again, photographers basically optimize these based on their experience to get a desired exposure. On the website for this class, I'm going to put a small applet that actually people at Stanford built that will let you explore the variability of these three to be able to get the best exposure in a synthetic kind of a play around mode. Thank you.